Welcome back to the podcast. Jonathan Reynolds, your host. I am sitting here with a legend in the EOS community. That's what he tells me anyway. Um, Scott Rusnak, he never told me that. It's good to be here with you in your hometown of San Diego, California. Thanks for coming on the show. You know, the craziest thing is when you do a podcast, a lot of times you're meeting people you don't know. You're not sure what their core values are. You're not sure their why. Yeah. And Jonathan, I've known you for about seven years, and uh, I'm humbled that you invited me. So oh, you. come on. Yeah. I re actually remember <laughs> when I moved to San Diego, reaching out to you, and we went to a a restaurant, a New Zealand restaurant. Yeah. And I had a lamb burger. Yeah. And I still remember it. That was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> you know, but that's the thing. It's like when you meet someone... You know, if you've got a brother from another mother. Yeah. The Commonwealth aside. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. So you give us your story, because obviously you're Canadian uh, by birth, American by choice. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty amazing that they'd let someone into this country with the right paperwork, but I did it. Um, <laughs> gosh, Jonathan, do you want the five-hour story, or where should we start? Hey, let's just, we'll, we'll riff a little bit. Yeah. Um, I want to hear about your EOS world, your yeah. consulting world. You've got some um, mega Olympic type stuff in here. You've got some <laughs> stories. you got some stories. So let's go and... Uh, I'm sure our listeners will be able to pull and extract some good nuggets from the stuff. Yeah, but You're an author as well. <laughs> like since, since, I, since in the last seven years, anyway, you've authored books. and Yeah, well, you know, anyone can do a coloring book. And I tried to make sure there was pictures in there. But, you know, the funny thing, Jonathan, is that I was asked to write a book about 15 years ago, and I didn't do it. Yeah. And the people that asked me knew about my coaching background and – how I struggled through high school, um, how I really grew as not only an entrepreneur, but as a person and a human being. Hmm. And I think that's the why of why I'm a coach. Yeah. So I'll just back up the train. Um, the interesting thing is in high school, I was trying to become a professional cyclist. Who didn't want to become Steve Bauer or Greg LeMond, like Steve Bauer, an iconic Canadian yeah. who wore the yellow jersey? Thing is, when I was racing my bicycle, I was just riding my bike and racing my bike to race it. And I got lucky in a couple stage races. I won some stages, and the legendary Canadian Olympic coach, Des Dickey, bless his soul, tapped me on the shoulder one day and asked me if I was going to stop just racing my bike to race my bike and if I wanted to enter races I could win. And I didn't quite understand that concept because I just thought every weekend you just raced your bike. Yeah. And he said, look, if we develop a map, a plan for you, which we actually called my ability or my accountability plan, yeah. if we put that in place, I'm pretty sure you can be winning the majority of the races you go into. But I don't want you to think about regional, provincial, Canadian races. I want you to think about going to Worlds. And that just blew my mind. What? So he took my mind from a 1X, hey, I can win local races, to an absolute 10X of let's go to Worlds. And he made it possible. Wow. <laughs> That is cool. That yeah. is cool. And what did, what did some of the things you learned from him that you still apply today? Well, I realized that other people are way more talented than I am. <laughs> but back to the book you wrote, I was the right person in the right seat. Uh -huh. I had the discipline and accountability to follow a plan. And he mm -hmm. put together a plan for me that basically said, we know what you're great at, a one to 5% uphill climb the last two kilometers. And if you can go to races like that that are a circuit race, you can probably win the majority of those. And lucky enough for me, at one day and age, I became Alberta, British Columbia, Arizona, California, New Mexico state champ. Yeah. All because of that amazing coaching. And I just realized that if I could have a world-class coach in my life, that I could probably bring that into businesses as well. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Do you, when you're uh, racing, are you, are you doing like velodrome type racing? What are you, what's the? I used to, but it was mainly circuit races. Okay. Uh, you know, a seven day stage race would be the most, uh, th and the interesting thing was I realized I was overweight for a cyclist. I was like about 150 pounds. Me, back. me too. We have something in common. <laughs> You'd be a great guy to draft behind though. So you're on my, <laughs> you're on my team. We'll edit that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was mainly circuit races or short stage races. Yeah. And so it was an absolute blast, but we would just find those races that I could dial in. And yeah. in my mind, I'd go to the start line and. Humbly confident is one of our core values, just knowing that I had a great shot at winning and I was going to hopefully take the prize money. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. 
All right. So fast forward a bit in your career then. Um, what's what's next in the journey? What's next in my journey right now? No, sorry. What's next uh, when you kind of started to get into business? I mean, you got into business at some point. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. I was lucky enough to get through high school and college, which was an escapade all to itself. Yeah. We won't regress. Um, I was lucky. I'm glad to know it was luck because I don't have I didn't have that luck. Right so. place at the right time, a ton of luck and a ton of tenacity. Yeah. Was not the smartest guy in the room. I'm sitting beside the best looking guy in the room, so I think we got that. But I was lucky enough to get gobbled up in the corporate world when software and technology was becoming something. I, mm-hmm. I got my hands around that. And my soon-to-be father-in-law uh, said to me, hey, you know a little bit about software. We're running this product called Mac School. It was developed by Apple. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Apple. But it wasn't that good. And I think that maybe you can pull something together to compete with them. And I had a friend in my community in Canada that was actually starting a company. And I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, hey, why don't we try to go for this? And our competitor was Apple. Yeah. So over the course of about 16 years, we grew a company called Schoologic thousands of schools around North America and Europe, and we really turned it into something. Lucky enough, I was able to exit. And a lot of people are like, why did you exit? Well, I was coaching other entrepreneurs and getting involved in EO and different kinds of groups. And they all said to me, Scott, you're probably a better coach than a CEO. So I just completely stepped aside, bet the farm, and I became a coach. And that was about 15, 16 years ago now. Now, you became a coach. What, I mean, were you creating your own roadmaps and things like that? Because that's not when you joined EOS. Yeah, it had really nothing to do with EOS. So what I did was I took the, we called it the My Accountability Plan that Des designed for me to race my bicycle, and I brought that into businesses. So crazy enough, core values, number one. Mm-hmm. What's your core focus? What's your why? Credit to Simon Sinek after you reread yeah. that book. Yeah. Why are you doing this? And then we put together... 10-year, five-year, three-year, two-year, one-year goals. And crazy enough, we had quarterly rocks. Yeah. And I read that you know, like wonderful book that Jim Collins wrote a long time ago, and it just became something. Yeah. So I just kind of pulled this together on my own until I met the amazing Gina Wickman in the writings of EOS. Did, you, did you meet, is that how it happened? You met, bumped into him or you met him at something? <laughs> or did you read the book? Like, what was the, the kind of... I was quasi-introduced, let's put it that yeah. way. And... I don't read books. I might have written a book, but I listened to the Audible, and yeah. I was I was pissed off at myself. Really? <laughs> and I, I'm trying not to swear because I know that YouTube uh, disallows any swearing. <laughs> I was pretty pissed off at yeah. myself yeah. that I hadn't put all this together. But he's a genius. He pulled it together, and yep. uh, let's just say the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. So you so now you've been um, how many co- companies have you coached? Are you tracking that? Gosh, like. It's almost close to 200. Now, not all of them with EOS, but sure, yeah. a couple hundred uh, a couple companies. hundred companies. And then some interesting organizations that, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you could, yeah, yeah. When we're done with the podcast, I'll hear about those. Um, <laughs> you can tell me exactly who they are, what the heck happened. No. But um, so give us some, give us some like, great like, stories. I mean, you think of great companies that you have the ability to be a part of and see them grow and get yeah. systems and processes in place and data and people and all of those components. Um, what's, what's a company that comes to mind when you feel like most proud? Most proud. Can I talk about two? You can. Yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> You're a rebel. You do whatever you want anyway. We all know that. Well, I try to keep it within the realms, and I yeah. need structure. Uh, the U.S. Olympic Nordic ski team. So it's cross-country skiing and it's ski jumping. And I met Billy DeMong, a good friend of mine, who was the first North American to win an Olympic gold medal in uh, Nordic combined. And he was running USA Nordic and just had people that would donate money. Uh, they loved the cause. He had a big board. And he had this group of ex-athletes that he wanted to make sure were the right people in the right seats. We talked about discipline and accountability. He said, we've got these values, but how do we turn it into something? Yeah. And over the course of about 18 months, I helped Billy get pointed in the right direction. So that's amazing yeah. graduation feeling. I got goosebumps right now thinking oh, about huge. that. Yeah. That's great. And then the next one, and I'll give a shout out to Mark Rohde, uh, Mark Rohde is the CEO and visionary of Mar Residential. And I met Mark early in my EOS journey on a mountain bike trip with yeah. another friend. And he'd been talking about traction. I told him that I was an implementer. And over the course of the year, we got to know each other better. He felt more comfortable with me. And here we are. I can't believe it, Mark, but uh, I wish he was here. 2023, 
his leadership team, his vision and his values have got him running a world-class multifamily organization that makes sure that people have got solid roofs over their head and yeah. really safe communities. So I, I, for me, that that's one that really hits the core. Wow. And your client base are all over, right? They're not, I mean, some, some implementers like, I don't, you know, uh, you, you have some great implementers here in the area. Like, I won't leave this area. I've not, no. they come to me, but you, 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 you go places, <laughs> don't you? Well, I'm on this journey called 60 for 60 to be in 60 countries by the time I'm 60 and I'm at 57. Small debate with my wife, but I don't leave the country, but I do have Shalansky and Associates, Associates out of Anchorage. I just left Southwest Glass and Glazing, Greg Allison, love you, brother, yeah. uh, in Albuquerque. It was a two-day session with them earlier this week. Today, I was with West Coast uh, Wealth Advisors in San Diego. I try to operate in San Diego and Scottsdale, Arizona, mm -hmm. but if they're amazing, like you, if they're amazing like Shalansky, if they're amazing like an Olympic team, yeah. I'll go, and I really like it. I mean, you've you've introduced us to some of your clients, and we've done some hiring for them, like in Vegas, I'm thinking. Yeah, and absolutely. Jarvis Financial. Yeah. 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 So, you got, I mean, you got you got clients all over the place, and yeah. you do travel if it's fun, and you do some cool things when it comes to session days where you're like, yeah, let's not do them here. Let's do them in Montana. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Absolutely. You go do some, you know hunting or whatever it is you, you do, right? Yeah. yeah, we got some good stories there. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> What's some wildest things you've done with clients? Uh, some of the wildest things, some surfing, yeah. some cliff jumping, heli skiing, absolutely. Heli skiing? Yeah, why not, right? Why not? So the cool thing is when I go through this journey with my EOS clients, I ask them to envision one year ahead. So we could go straight to the VTO, but we know all about that. Everyone yeah. watching the show hopefully knows about it. Yeah. But ask them, look forward one year. What does success look like in one year? Not only in business, but on a personal level. Yeah. Right? We love the people we work with, and I love the clients I coach. But what's the most extreme, amazing thing we can do in one year if we hit those targets? So heli skiing has been one of them. And one of my clients said, look, I can't ski properly. I'm not fit enough. So I also put them on a fitness regime. So I went back to my coaching accreditation that yep. I've picked up from a couple Olympic groups. I said, we're going to get you there. So they got more satisfaction out of that heli skiing trip than anything in their oh life. And it's, it's been pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. That is really cool. Um, so one year from today, uh, whenever this airs, it'll be, you know, probably the end of the year. Uh, but uh, <laughs> one year from, um, oh, it's the end of 2024. Yeah. What does wild success look like for you? So that's uh, end of 2024. A couple pieces are really important to my core. Yeah. Okay. I operate with something called Dunbar's number. Okay. What's that? <laughs> it's within my book. And I'm not trying to, uh, everyone does not need to buy my book, but it's well, called. They should though. <laughs> we'll, and we'll talk about the book in a second. Yeah. I need people to think about designing their life before someone does it for them. Hmm. So the lead up to tw end of 2024 is I'll be in 60 countries. I know I've been in Cambodia. I'll be in Vietnam. I'll know that I've made an impact in the life of those I surround myself with. We don't have to get into the charitable causes mm -hmm. and donations and whatnot. But by the end of 2024, I'll have been in 60 countries with my amazing wife. Yeah. I'll make sure that I've had one incredibly impactful trip with both of my sons who are 24 and 26. And we'll have a, an amazing family trip. Last year, we were in Hakaba, Japan. Next year, we're going to be in the Tour de France as a family. By the end of 2024, we're going to accomplish all of that. So I put my family first, and my clients know that. Yeah. But the 15 amazing clients I work with will be in a way better place than I found them, and they'll be getting everything they want out of their business. That's wild. Are you taking them all clients right now? It's a tricky thing. I've always got room for one more amazing client, but I'm full. Yeah. But the reality of being full and understanding capacity, if somebody shows up the door that looks amazing, they have the right core values and they're really dialed in and ready for the journey, yeah. then I'm ready as well. Yeah. Um, why? Why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? And I love that. You know, Jonathan, I look back at myself and realize if I didn't have an amazing coach in my life, mm -hmm. if I didn't have an amazing mother and an amazing mentor, there's no way on God's green earth that I would be where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for others, I wouldn't be here. And those others were coaches and mentors and sponsors yeah. of mine. Um, on a personal note, you mentioned mother. 
Mm -hmm. Your father? Passed away a few years ago. Ah, so sorry. No, it's, uh, it's good. You learn lessons from totally, those yeah. that passed. Yeah. Was that a, uh, a sudden thing, painful journey? No, yeah, I'd learned a lot from my father. He was an oil and gas entrepreneur in Western Canada, and we saw the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And I realized from watching that, I did not want to be in that industry, and I want to be able to provide my family with the straight line that went to the top, not the jagged edge. So there was some bloody yeah. moments along the way. Yeah. But uh, I'm fine with that. Peaceful, uh, peaceful transition for your relationship with him in the end? Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, how do you, you mentioned your investment, very, seems like very intentional with your sons and your wife, the trips and investments there. What does that look like with your mom? With my mom, it's tricky. We'll try not to get too emotional, okay. but she's really suffering from some debilitating things. She lives in Western Canada still. Okay. But the most amazing thing, when you design your life, right, there's things that go on. I know I'm going to see her in Fernie, British Columbia on September the 9th for uh -huh. a wonderful wedding. So she's going to be there. Yeah. But, you know, Jonathan, the one thing about designing your life and living and breathing with your core values is sometimes you need to say goodbye to some wonderful people. I'm not ready to say goodbye. Yeah. But I know when I saw you, what, three, two or three years ago, yeah. walking down the street in Solano Beach and you said some wonderful things to my wife, I said, you know, I might not see Jonathan again for a long time. Yeah. But I know that we're connected through our soul. So I'll yeah. be okay. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you take care of, like, the the Scott Rosneck behind the scenes guy. Yeah. Like obviously you're very, very dedicated to fitness. I, sh I shouldn't say obviously, but uh, for the audio, he's 470 pounds um, <laughs> for those who are not watching. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was a very sarcastic thing when I said, <laughs> obviously take care of your health. No, I'm kidding. You're very fit. Um, so you take care of those things. How do you take care of kind of all of the, the all of the, uh, the facets of your, the personal private world? What does that look like? I am, I've become very dialed in at protecting my own energy. Mm. And I believe that willpower doesn't work. So I think that what you've got to do is you've got to surround yourself in your environment with the right people. And you've got to understand your core values. You have to live in an amazing spot. I get to live in Solano Beach and I get to live in Scottsdale, Arizona. For the tax man, he knows I'm in Scottsdale for uh, seven months of the year. Yeah. So amazing people. You have to live in an inspiring location and look where we are today. Yeah. What's your why? Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that each and every entrepreneur or individual I run into leaves in a better place than I found them. So that's yeah. my why. What do I do? I try to help people get everything they can from their life and their business. So yeah. when I do that and then I really protect my energy, things just seem to come together. What does stress look like for you? Yeah. Stress looks for me when I've got people entering my universe that don't understand what it's like to be successful, what it's like to really put your neck on the line, to surround yourself with the right people. Now, look, there's some luck involved. There's a lot of tenacity involved. But if people are going to enter my stratosphere, my Dunbar's number, which we can talk about later, that don't get it, that becomes stressful. But I'm also very good at deflecting those people. Yeah. I'm good at saying no, and I'm good at deflecting. Um, I mean, I'm assuming uh, that the I've always got room for, I'm full, but i got one room for one more awesome. <laughs> yeah. It gives you the ability to say I'm full to the non-awesome ones. I am full, and I can, <laughs> uh, my calendar is right in front of me. I try to book my calendar out 12 months in advance, and I rotate that calendar all the time. So if somebody showed up and they were awesome, probably in about 45 to 50 days we could find a slot but not right away yeah okay that's clever um uh failure talk about failure failure for me um occurs when you get out of your own unique ability mm. so we've got a tool with an eos and this is not an eos podcast but it's important yeah. to talk about some of the tools that delegate and elevate checklist really allows you to come back to Dan Sullivan, the strategic coach's teaching, yeah. that says, here's your unique ability. When I get outside of that unique ability, and I've done it once or twice in my life, you think you're so full of it. Your ego takes over and says, no, I can do this. I can really stretch f farther than I think I can. And you're outside of your own unique ability. I'm not technical. I'm not mechanical. I can't fix things around the house. 
But of course, I can develop a virtual world for kids that the NHL, the NFL, the MLS will sponsor and a million kids will take it up. I'm probably going to fail, and I might have failed at that in the past. Yeah, um, and uh, how do you deal with um, missing goal? I mean, you're such a goal-driven person. Yeah. Like, how do you how do you handle that? How do you process that on a on a kind of heart level? Yeah. Uh, when you when you miss the mark. Well, we've got to own it, mm. right? My biggest failures, I've owned them, and I've looked at it. It's like, okay, this is the the cusp of failure. I need to look backwards and say to myself, okay, I've failed before. What was my mindset at that point of failure? But yeah. then what was my mindset at the point of the highest degree of excellence I've achieved? And how did I get from that low point to that high point? So I'll go back there from time to time and do a little bit of an audit to realize what it take, took to get from the bottom yeah. and back up to the top. Yeah. And then I take a look at my own unique ability and realize I probably stepped out of that a bit. Yeah. Uh, unique ability. That's, that's, uh, it's, I mean, staying really focused into your strength zone. Yeah. Is uh, I imagine it's huge. Um, how did you discover what you're not good at and what you're good at? Like, how did you? What did that journey look like? I'm a terrible employee. Yeah. Terrible. Some of my clients are like, hey, we'd love to have you come in and play a bigger piece, and I tell them it's probably going to be about a million dollars. Like, oh, and then I tell them it's a million dollars a day, because I know if I'm an employee, I'm yeah. just going to wreck everything and. You know, I'm not as big as you, but I'm a bit of a bull in China shop. And uh -huh. I can be very obtuse. Yeah. So I just know if I stay in my core element as a coach and I follow a proven process, the right process, that I can get people pointed in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, so you just, you're just, you're a bit of a machine in the way you function. I mean, you have like plans, you know, you, you plan 12 months out, you follow the process, discipline. Oh. You, you follow your uh, the coaches. I mean, it all started with your coach, very formulative years of, I can get you in a process yeah. that makes you a winner. Absolutely. It's, it's sad to say, but I know what I'm doing on December the 15th. I definitely know what I'm doing on December the 25th. It's my son's birthday. We'll be in Costa Rica. Yeah. I definitely know that my wife and I will be in Ho Chi Minh City on February the 9th of 2024. Yeah. So I might, you know, I might be dyslexic. I might have all these other things going on. But I really know what the plan of head looks like. Yeah. But I'm able to, you know, be a little bit malleable, yeah. understanding that other things need to come in place. So yeah. um, I got to give Des credit from back in the day to say, Scott, put together a plan every year and rotate that thing. You can get pretty close to doing what you want to do. I love it. Dunbar. Dunbar? Yeah. yeah. Talk about that. Robin Dunbar is an amazing PhD, a doctor at Liverpool University. Okay. And he said human beings have got the ability to have an amazing network of friends and close allies, but that number is fixed. So he came up with a number called 515150, and it's become known as Dunbar's number. Okay. So go on Wikipedia, he'll, that'll give you a better explanation. What he basically said, those five people are those fixed people that you talk to almost every day, every week, and those people know your core values, they know who you are, and yeah. they might know you better than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. They said the next 15 people see you and they understand you. You probably see them every 30, 60, 90 days. Again, they get your values, you get their values, but they provide impact in your life. And then he said the next group is about 150 people. So throw away LinkedIn and Facebook and we're LinkedIn buddies, but we're really yeah. buddies. Yeah. That 150 number, he really went back into medieval times and said when these villages got above 150 people, there'd be increase of, of crime and all kinds of family issues and you know people just creating illegal activities. And so I dug into this and I actually went and I listened to him talk and yeah. I really started to try to understand this. So I changed Robin Dunbar's number for my own utility. I'm a little bit introverted, so five, it's still there. My mom, my wife, my two boys, my coach and my mentor, those five. Yeah. Then I have 15 amazing clients that I see every 30, 60, 90 days, yeah. love them all. And I do love all my clients. I know yeah. it might sound weird, but I love no, them. But I get you. It's, it's incredible the kind of uh, emotion and passion I have with my clients. And then the other number, which I want you to laugh at, it's a little quirky, is 28. So I've got 28 other people in my life, Mike Bueller, Mark Rohde, Scott Roberts, if you're listening, that I know when they text me and say, hey, we're doing a mountain bike trip, we're doing a ski trip, hey, I'm going to be in Europe. Do you want to meet then? I'll drop everything and go back to my calendar and look at it. And those 28 people, 
it's going to be impactful because I know that on the 29th of September this year, I'll be in Lake Tahoe with four of my tightest amigos doing some mountain biking. So they're a part of my 28. All right. So um, <laughs> obvious next question is the 28 come first or is the chicken or the egg? The 28 come first or the actual happen to be 28 people that you named out and you're like, there's 28. That's the number. Tell you five comes first. Yeah. That's my family. The 15 is next. And those 28, they just know that I'm busy. And I'm a could, it, could it be 29 is what I mean. Okay. I would really have to stretch myself. But I tell you what, if you want to move down the street, Jonathan, and if you want to hang out more, I think you're a candidate for the 2029 20, because we have the same core values. Uh, so so it's, not, it's not a principle of I won't go beyond 28. It just happens to be I could name 28 people that I would drop everything for. Yeah. I used to have 30. Okay. okay. I had Two just, interesting friends yeah. that didn't respect my family in a public situation, and there was others there, and we had to break up. And it was a pretty easy conversation about respect, uh, being humbly confident and putting your ego aside. And if someone thinks they're better than my family, they could be better than me, that's fine. But if they're going to touch my five and not be respectful, not do the right thing, not yeah. do what you say, not help first, they don't fit. Yeah. So we had to break up. Wow, what did that uh, that conversation go like? It's tricky, and I remember it to this day. Do but they go, I don't even care. I don't want to be a twenty nine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but I feel better about it as a human being. Yeah, no, I still like those. People. So you cut? The, did you cut them off, or did you just say, "Hey, you're, you're not. I'm, I'm I'm addressing some behavior or addressing the way you disrespected my family or whatever it was, and that's." now affected our relationship so i mean that was about it at the no name saloon in park city utah i sat down and i had a beer and i said look here's how i operate and i'm not trying to be high and mighty but if you can't respect my family and me this isn't going to work and they thought that was a little too high and mighty and i'm okay with that i said yeah. look if i see you on the trail or the ski hill we can still have a beer but we're not going to be planning mountain bike and ski trips anymore and that's just how it goes I'd rather give my time and energy to those I love being around. That is, that's a that's a pretty high, uh, I don't know what the right word is. Well, I mean, very clear boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. And Jonathan, um, I'm not sure if you're the same as me, but I went through a period of time where I lost a lot of friends through death, through disease, some through suicide. And I just realized that if I'm going to make an impact on the right people that I love in my life, I got to make an impact on those that need the energy and I want to pour into. Yeah. No, I, I don't, I, I, it's hard. I mean, I come from a, a family line that's been very, very open and right. very, very free. And I married into a family that's very, very open, not, you know, kind of like not, not locking the doors, but kind of just like everyone's welcome anytime <laughs> and like zero boundaries. Yeah. Like you just need to be available to all people at all times. And this has been a year for me of trying to figure out what those what are, what does healthy boundaries look like, where I actually am in the driver's seat and not allowing other people to to design my life for me. Yeah, that was a nice transition, wasn't it? It's good. You read the book, so I appreciate there it. There you go. There <laughs> you go. All right, transition. You wrote a book. What? Why? When? Uh, yeah. Tell us that story. How did that come about? If you want to have the most frightening experience in your life, and you've written a book as well, I beg anyone to start putting together chapters of what they think is impactful for others. Mm -hmm. If you're writing a book for yourself, that's the wrong reason. If you're out there to help other people, I say go for it because it's frightening. Yeah. Rewritten it three times. <laughs> just sold on at Amazon again. I'm rewriting it again. And there's just some small chapters. But Really, the impetus of that book is design your life before someone else does it for you. Yeah. And part number one, as you know about, I talk about that cycling career and how I had my rear end handed to me, Yeah. trying to do everything, please everyone. And it wasn't until I really put the right people in the right seats yeah. in my life and had a plan that I was able to get there. And that's really the impetus of the book. And it's um, very catered. I mean, there's a lot of EOS in it, mm -hmm. right? It's very kind of a lot of EOS language in it. So yeah. for those who run their business on EOS, it's going to be like, okay, I got this. Yeah, they will. And I throw some other stuff in there as well. Yeah. You know, uh, 
design of your year is not an EOS tool. Sh sh no, I'm not, I'm not saying it's it. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you ripped off EOS. I'm not saying that. <laughs> You're like, wait, hold on a second. No, but I mean, I'm saying there's a lot of things in it that people feel very comfortable with. Yeah. And it's not like in a kind of jolting, but really rich. I mean, it's a, it is a field guide, right? It is. Well, and that's good. Um, you know, if there's a scorecard, you have to have your weekly measurables. So if you know you're winning or losing each day, each week. I talk about rocks. What are your quarterly priorities? Yeah. Hey, where do you want to be by the end of the first year? So there's a lot of that in there that'll only help you build on your EOS practice, yeah. practice or yourself as a leader. Um, I I did. I really appreciated the scorecard yeah, from it as well. <laughs> just the personal scorecard, which is it's the accountability piece. It's like, yeah. man, if I write this thing down, then I have to follow through or I have to. You know, it's, it's kind of like 75 hard. You, know, you got to start over. It's kind of, like, oh, you know, do I really want to take that on right now? But <laughs> Writing down the personal scorecard stuff yeah. of what I need to work on and what I'm actually, what are the numbers that really mean something to my <laughs> personal world? Yeah. Things like exercise and health and, and all of those things, which uh, <laughs> you're a machine about. <laughs> you're like, it's just, I got up and went for a run at 5 a.m., right? So I kind of did today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, Jonathan, is I'm a big fan of R&D. Yeah. Some, peop some people might be that's research and development. No. I want people to take my teachings, rip them off, duplicate, and make them better. So if my book is a success, if traction and EOS are a success, people will make those better. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, and um, when you fast forward now, obviously writing a book and seems to be kicking off great and <laughs> doing well online, and I can I see people reading it. And I bought, bought a bunch of give them away. Um, so not because I didn't like it. I'm going to give this away. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I love giving books away. Um, we, we have, um, we're here in Southern California right now, but my, my the normal podcast is actually in my uh, home studio. And uh, all of my books are out you know, right outside my office there. And I'm like, every time somebody comes, I'm like, all right, let me find a good book to give you. Because I'm like, I'm not going to read it again. <laughs> like, so there you go. Let's just get passed it on. Um, but I bought a bunch of the, uh, bunch of the entrepreneurial field guide. Uh, wait, how does it say again? Entrepreneurs? Yeah, the Entrepreneur's Field, field guide. guide. Thank you. Golly, we've got to say it right here because somebody's going on Amazon right now. The Entrepreneur's <laughs> Field Guide. Buy it. You know, it's yeah. great. Um, so uh, if you were going to write another book, what would oh. it be? We didn't prep for this, so I, no. I totally dig this. I've been really thinking about the over 60 entrepreneur. So at today's moment, I'm 57 and about a half. And there's some really amazing entrepreneurs that I know that have still got their head down. And they're 65, 70-year-old amigos of mine that are just really making a difference in the world. Yeah. So I've started to put together the table of content, contents for that. And there's something there that is for the over 60 entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. Um, give, us some, give us some sound bites of like, what would you, if, you were, if I was a 65 year old entrepreneur, like what, what's your, your counsel gonna be to me? You're not doing it for the money anymore. No. What does your legacy look like? Mm -hmm. Who else are you affecting? What are your values? And are you mapping out your year? Because I'm gonna ask you, Jonathan, I'm going to pretend you're 65, 70 years yeah. old right now. How many more moments, impactful moments, do you have with those you love? <laughs> right? Think about that, right? Yeah. Like this could be our last day on earth. What's an impactful moment? I know yeah. I'm going to go for a walk on the beach with Di and our dog, Roxy. Yeah. I know I'm going to see my sons this year at certain instances. But if you're a 65 to 70-year-old entrepreneur, what's your legacy? And how many moments of impact do you have left in your life? Yeah. That's challenging. It's quite, it gets emotional because, well, for me, I'm like kind of processing that right now, going, okay, and there's some, there's some people I really, really love. Yeah. And the investment, um, the investment in those relationships can feel so like, oh man, I, I, come on, don't you understand? We don't have, we're not going to have forever. Yeah. You know, but actually going, okay, how do I, how do I navigate that to get the most out of it? Not for, get the most, but uh, for shared experience. Yeah. of investing in one another that does leave a legacy and does um, perpetuate and continue um, good in the world. I mean, like I'm, I'm gripped by um, good. Like, what, what, can we, what can we do that's good together? Like, what can we do that is shared, good for each other, yeah. and good for the world around in a selfless way? Because I think every, every relationship that we have um, that really means something, if you can find something that's shared selfless yeah. 
but does good for somebody else. Oh my gosh, it is so good for the soul. Ah, you get me. I got the goosebumps going, Jonathan. I'm doing a talk in about a month in LA mm -hmm. with a really good friend, and we're pulling together a bunch of kids who are burgeoning entrepreneurs. Yeah. So I'm going to walk through a bunch of the steps within my book, and I'm going to give all those kids a book. Yeah. And I'm going to help them as well. I've always got time to coach people who maybe don't have the wherewithal to invest yeah. in a full-fledged coaching cycle. So I get a ton of satisfaction of that. And I've always got spots in my calendar to make sure that those people who want more or want the coaching and really want the energy, I'm there for them. And I totally dig doing that. If it all, um, if you all ended today, you couldn't work another day in your life and mm -hmm. there was no more income and there was no, no more of this, you're kind of like incapacitated. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why I'm laughing at that, but um, uh, tell me what would, um, what would be your most significant sort of story of your life you like you feel most proud of this instance this this thing you've done achieved accomplished experienced what do you feel most proud of well um i'll go straight there the reason why i'm a coach is because i've had amazing people in my life mm -hmm. you know, go straight to my mom yeah if i'm incapacitated all i can do is talk the thing in my mind that I would do is make sure that those who weren't as lucky as I am, yeah. I, I think I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I yeah. really do. If all I could do was talk, I would lean into those people, people and still say, I'm the luckiest person in the world. And I'm, I'm assuming I still have my mind, right? Yeah, you still have your mind. Good, I can still <laughs> it's talk. really not that specific. It's not going to end. Don't worry. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? where is this coming from? No, but that's good. I, I love that, right? Because yeah. I'm very much an in-person emotional, let's drive it yeah. home. Hopefully I still have that ability to help others drive yeah. it home. And I'd use my mind to do that. Yeah. I'd try to give them all the tools and all the things I've learned to be able to get them pointed in the right direction. Yeah, that's great. I am. Um, well, I am. Uh, I've, I've, when I hear your name, I, how I describe you, I'm like, <laughs> this guy is wild. He's got more energy than you can imagine. He is deeply committed to helping other people grow and he's radical. Like he's committed to it. And, uh, he is, uh, he's not, he'll break the rules. You know, he's not a kind of rule follower in the sense of like, okay, has this has been done, not been done. Did it? He's going to find the, the, find ways to break things and make things better and make <laughs> people's lives better. And that's how I describe you. Um, and I've obviously happily, happy to introduce you to people. Cause I'm like, Hey, this is a guy is wild. You know, he's, <laughs> you, you're going to want to be around him because you stir people for greatness and you stir people to be better. Um, and so, I mean, I, a lot of respect for you and those things. And, uh, 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 I definitely admire the kind of from a distance going, this guy's <laughs> life is, he's very, very intentional. Uh, well, I would have said the same about you, right? And I always tell my clients, and I'm being careful about YouTube, I'm not going to kiss their rear ends. I'm not yeah. going to shine their shoes. But, you know, you're a classic visionary, yeah. making a big difference in people's lives. And it's been pretty easy for me to refer people to you. And they've yeah. all really ended up in the right place. And the interesting thing about being a rule breaker is I can still stand in front of the EOS community every quarter at our QCEs and deliver a breakout. Yeah. And God bless their souls, they still ask me to give a breakout. Yeah. <laughs> and we say that purity is the agenda. That's the 20%. Yeah. But as a coach, as a human being, as someone with amazing core values that's looking to push others further, that's the 80% you can bring. Yeah. Right? You're on the football field. You're in a rugby match. You're in a bike race. Yeah. We've all got to ride the bike. What are you going to bring to make sure that you're matching your own unique ability and you're bringing those other people to push them further? Yeah. So everybody gets a bike at EOS. Yeah. You just decide how you want to ride it. Yeah. I might ride it a little bit differently. <laughs> <laughs> One thoughtful, thought-provoking question that you'd want to leave the listeners with. Call those people that are in your 5, your 15, and your 28 within the next two or three days. Life's pretty precious and make sure that those people know how much you love them and the impact they've made on your life. Wow. That's good. Gratitude is everything, brother. That is really good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Honestly, that's stirring a great, great note right there to end on. Do it. Get, make some phone calls, send some texts. Well, phone calls is better. <laughs> they need to hear your voice. Uh, don't send a mass text. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, it doesn't have the same level yeah. <laughs> but uh but no thank you this is really good um we'll uh we'll definitely look forward to getting some time with you next time in san diego i'm humbled and honored thank you oh cheers bye